The referee is Roger Taylor. George Nujim and Steve Siomas will call the sidelines. Ken Austin is the fourth official. And there will be a timeout a little bit past 23 minutes gone in each half. We are underway. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame wearing the white jerseys. Carolina in the distinctive light blue. And Debbie Keller with the steal right away off. Sharp gets in the shot. On Renola, she makes the save. Ashley Sharp very steady in the semifinals. Maybe a little jittery there, Shannon. I think very jittery. And that's one of the things that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, but it is a factor, the nerve factor. It's one thing that uh, Chris Petroselli is worried about for his Notre Dame team. Robin Confer sending it across. Kate Fisher very solid on defense for Notre Dame. Gets it ahead to McCarthy. McCarthy has tremendous skill. Brings it out to the side to Jody Hartwig. Now for Cindy Dawes. She drops it off for Tiffany Thompson. Square pass for Kate Fisher. Fisher up the wing for Holly Manthai, a very fast freshman. She'll be in a good matchup with Danielle Egan, who takes it away for North Carolina. Back to Dawn Crow. That's Scharf. Dawes in traffic. Venturini giving her trouble. And Dawes just throws it away to Dawn Crow. Crow for Venturini. This could be the player of the year. Kerry Sanchez through to Venturini. Venturini on the go has Keller left and Daisy Wright goes for the shot. And it'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. No, it's a corner, excuse me. Yeah, and uh, Venturini in your picture there as she broke away from Cindy Dawes, uh, which surprised me. You see there she has lost Dawes. And look at her get away from Dawes. She cannot close her down and eventually gets uh, the shot off, but it deflects out for the corner kick. Kerry Sanchez to take the corner for North Carolina. Robin Confer's in motion by the penalty spot. Renola punches it clear, but not out. Venturini to Danielle Egan. Kate Fisher goes out to mark her. A quick turn for the cross, headed out by Scharf. Egan one times it for Keller. The header hits the post and comes out. Keller can't get the rebound. Tiffany Thompson clears for Notre Dame. Whoa. Wow, what action already around the front of the goal, and there's probably going to be a quick throw in here, or a long throw in, which will be more action in the goal mouth coming up, because Angela Kelly has got this terrific long throw, although she doesn't have much room in which to, to operate down here for that long throw, but uh, Notre Dame really jittery defensively at the moment. Tiffany Thompson on the volley. Kerry Sanchez for Carolina. Thompson right back at her. Boots it into the stands. And again, it'll be North Carolina throw. All kinds of action here. Look at this ball crossed in. A great flick on and off the post. It looked like for sure it was going in. And uh, the follow-up uh, attempt really not hit very hard at all uh, as um, Keller was not able to get a foot on it. Angela Kelly with the great range on the throw-ins. Four-time national team member for Canada and still an active member of that, that national team. Kelly heads it into the box, Dawes back out. Kelly just blasts it all the way across and Sarah Dacey gives chase along with Kate Fisher of Notre Dame. Dacey there first to Danielle Egan. Egan turns on the ball, it goes over the end line for the goal kick. Well, we've seen a lot of Carolina's ability to play the ball well in traffic, playing the short passing game and we'll probably see a lot of that as the day goes on. Notre Dame still a little bit jittery at the start. The Irish looking for their first good offensive thrust. Venturini playing very strongly in midfield, winning the free ball. In the air, Jack, and that's one of the things that Anson Dorrance talks about her, uh, sort of an unrecognized skill of hers of being able to get up and, and win those head ball. This is Tiffany Thompson. Up ahead for McCarthy. She's marked tightly by Stacy Wilson, a freshman who has fought her way into the North Carolina starting lineup, and it's going to be a while before anybody gets her out. And I think fight is the operative verb <laughs> for her. She is a tremendous uh, scrappy player uh, and a real fighter, and you saw her actually draw the foul there as she was trying to uh, go up the right wing. Dawn Crow, who serves the ball so beautifully, down to Sarah Dacey, her header taken away by Thompson, and Thompson clears. But again, right now, Seamus, Notre Dame is basically just trying to take the pressure off. They haven't had anything that resembles an offensive thrust. No, and the, first, the thing you worry most about uh, against North Carolina is just allowing them to have the ball in your defensive third of the field as much as they already have. Uh, they're getting into the penalty area, and they just are relentless about that. With uh, the more chances they get, the more likely they're going to score, as you'll see there right now. Confer tries the cross. Thompson heads it away. Loose in the box. Scharf misses it. 
Little chip attempt by Dacey goes out of bounds. And it'll be a corner again for North Carolina. Yep, they're very good at getting the ball quickly forward into the penalty area and putting pressure on defenders. And some of their goals, frankly, may not be works of art. They certainly have some good long-range shooting, but sometimes they, they scramble goals. But it's, a, it's just that persistence of getting players into scoring positions and putting enormous pressure on defenders to make mistakes. Here's Dawn Crow. Tremendous touch. She can put the ball right where she wants it. They go near post, trying to fire it right in there. And it was off Dacey for the goal kick. Dacey, uh, there is Crow, who uh, is a senior, one of six seniors in the starting lineup for North Carolina. And a great uh, passer of the ball, too. In the semifinal, we saw her spray some wonderful passes out to, to the sides. Uh, and just a very solid player, although they sometimes do substitute her and bring in a young player as well. Venturini into the corner, intended for Keller. Van Lake turns it away, now Fisher. And Manthai just guns it toward midfield. But Wilson tracks it down to Crow. Carolina settles the ball so well. And the Tar Heels move it. One and two touches. This is Venturini into the middle for Confer. Scharf collects. And hits a long ball. And I think that's a little bit of, of sort of early signs of nerves by hitting those long balls. They need some possession like this through midfield to hold the ball, string some passes together, uh, and not worry about sort of the long direct pass, which more often than not is picked off by the opponent. Venturini with a long ball down the wing for Keller after the interception. Keller working on Van Lake. Keller goes for the cross. Dacey touches it on. Here comes Egan on the far side. The ball and a save by Confer. Wow. Tremendous shot, too, by Egan getting by Manthai. We will be watching that matchup on that far side of Egan against uh, Mantha. It was a feature of their first game, which was played at a neutral site in St. Louis, the 0-0 match. And uh, it's, I think, definitely going to feature today. Well, when you look at North Carolina, the uh, Tar Heels had a 92-game winning streak stopped in that October 2nd tie. Yep. And then later they lost to Duke, which ended a 101-game unbeaten streak. Carolina has a 103-game unbeaten streak, a 101-game unbeaten streak, and Anson Dorrance's gang has a 92-game winning streak. The next longest streak is somewhere in the high 20s, and that's a pretty sizable gap. Throw in out of bounds, and it's it'll pretty come back play by Notre Dame here. The, the collection of statistics runs to something like 10 pages in their handout they give you here, and it's a little bit dizzying. The one that I like most is that in their 11 championship victories, they've given up only three goals, which I think is just phenomenal. Cindy Dawes settles, goes down the wing, intended for Hartwig, but Kerry Sanchez is there with plenty of time. Hartwig is a tough marker, gives her a hard time there. Sanchez has to go out of bounds with it, and the Irish get a throw in deep in Carolina territory where they haven't been all day. There's Kerry Sanchez, very solid defender. Hartwig lays it off. Wilson intercepts up the wing. Keller got a piece of it, and it's going to go out of bounds to Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame, uh, as I said, needs to put some passes together. It's very difficult to do against a uh, high-pressure team such as North Carolina because they just won't let you do it. But you've got to persist in doing it. You can't just simply get uh, intimidated out of your game, which is, of course, what Carolina would love to see happen. And... Uh, Notre Dame has really uh, survived the first wave, as it were, which doesn't always happen, as we saw in last year's championship. Here's Angela Kelly's throw-in power. She took that throw from about 40 yards off her own end line. Two throws went all the way over the end line in the first game against Notre Dame in St. Louis. That's how well she can throw the ball. And look at that, two throw-ins, and they're attacking at the top of the box. Thompson slide tackles it away, but there's Wilson to corral it in midfield along with Danielle Egan. Egan straight ahead for Venturini. Can she turn on Thompson? Square pass for Kelly. Kelly with a little bit of room. Good effort by McCarthy coming back. Here's Keller. She turns and cranks off a left footer. Granola lets it bounce wide. It'll be a goal kick to Notre Dame. They've only played twice, these two schools, before today. Carolina leads the series with a win and a tie. We told you about the tie in St. Louis. They also met a couple of years ago in 1993. And I think that was, that was in Texas, was it not? I mean, they've, they've yet to play each other uh, in uh, either team's home field. 
It's always been a neutral side. Although this may be a right, home field away from home for Notre Dame as it goes off Sanchez for the Notre Dame throw-in because uh, the Congregation of the Holy Cross uh, founded University of Portland. That was the same order which founded Notre Dame. Right. So who knows? Maybe there's a little hidden something here for the Irish. Hartwick loses the battle with Sanchez. She goes directly to Dacey. Good play by Fisher to get the ball away. And now this is Amy Van Lake. But Danielle Egan is there. At times it looks as if Carolina has 14 players out there because they are in the right place at the right time. And they always seem to have a lot of space to collect a ball that is cleared. Well, they've worked very hard, I think, uh, in reading each other's moves and in, in finding the space uh, to act on those reads. And of course, Anson Dorrance, the coach, is, is a masterful coach, was for a number of years, of course, the U.S. women's national team coach, just resigned uh, this year. Uh, but he is uh, about as skillful and as knowledgeable a coach as there is in this game, and his teams play with that knowledge. Robin Confer with a nice turn to Venturini. Venturini on the goal. Let's go a 35-yarder well wide. Goal kick for Notre Dame. Venturini with the shot there. Tiffany Thompson, uh, number nine for, uh, for the Irish, is going to be trying to mark Venturini today as we look at uh, goalkeeper you know, Ranola. And uh, Thompson in your picture there has really got her work cut out for her. I don't think it's it's physically possible for her to go 90 minutes uh, against Venturini. So we'll, we'll watch and see what sort of substitution uh, pattern takes place in midfield. This is North Carolina's Dacey against Fisher. Manthai coming back to help defensively. Dacey just chips it into the middle. Con for going forward, but Bernola is there first. Dawes gets a break as she gets by Kelly. Let's see if Notre Dame can counter. Venturini trying to run her down along with Sanchez. Dawes up ahead for McCarthy, couldn't control it. Raj Santana tries to turn it back. Good effort by Guerrero, and it goes out of bounds. Interesting sight there of Dawes breaking through with long strides with Venturini trying to track her down. And at, uh, Venturini uh, we think of primarily as a, an attacking player but she's got a very good read of the game and knows uh, when it's important to go uh, and track a, uh, an opponent down as you look at uh, Tisha Venturini. So a, a selfless player as well, as a highly skillful and scoring one. This is Tracy Noonan. And she has pretty solid all around skills. She distributes the ball well from the goal and controls the area in the air very well. She's quite assertive. Dawes on the header, but it comes right to Angela Kelly, who settles immediately. Up for Keller. And it's out of bounds. Kate Sobrero will take the throw. It never came in bounds, and they will do it again. The whole ball has to uh, cross into play. Or the ball has to get over the line in the uh, plane, which goes skyward in order for the ball to get into play. And that's why Notre Dame got the throw again. Here's Jody Hartwick going down the wing. Guerrero pops it up. Sanchez also there. And this is going to be a throw into North Carolina. It's difficult to see the sidelines from our camera angles, but that actually makes for a terrific soccer stadium because the stands go right down to the benches and down to the sidelines. And the fans are on top of the action here at Merlot. Well, we've played uh, almost, uh, what, 14 minutes now, and, uh, Nor and Notre Dame's got to feel pretty good that they've uh, survived the early scare, but here comes Tisha Venturini. Working on Scharf into the middle for Dacey. It deflects back to the corner. Venturini for Sanchez. Kerry Sanchez cranks one off, blocked by Scharf. Sanchez again off of Scharf, and that one's going to score it over the end line for the corner kick. Interesting run by Venturini. Before that, she's a central player primarily, but she ranges off to the left on that last attack. Uh, lost lost uh, Tiffany Thompson, uh, but was picked up well by the uh, other defense uh, defenders for Notre Dame. Terry Sanchez on the corner. Daisy on the short post, right across, they score! Great flick on, a great flick on. Angela Kelly on the goal.
perfect set piece. Uh, you see them all congratulating each other. That's clearly something that's been worked on in practice. Watch this now, the good ball. Look at the near post flick on. There's a little touch right there, and in comes Kelly with an easy tap in, but a perfect touch on by Daisy. This is something you work on time and time again. Near post corner, good flick across. Defense really caught off balance, and there's the first goal of the game. That is the third consecutive year in which Angela Kelly has scored in the national championship game. And she does not do a lot of scoring during the regular season, but when the games are most important, she does the most scoring. So now Notre Dame is down. Cindy Dawes with a long cross. Noonan is there. Manthai not really contesting it, but making the run. Sanchez was the taker of that corner kick. And uh, of course, any time as a coach, ooh, there's a tough challenge in there by Confer on Thompson. Any time as a coach, you get a chance to work on ways to score that are outside the flow of the play, uh, then that's a great opportunity. And uh, there's nothing more satisfying, though, I think you'll agree, Jack, there's nothing more satisfying than executing something you have worked on over and over and over again in practice. And there is Kerry Sanchez, who is on a half track, half soccer scholarship at North Carolina. We're gonna see the foul again as uh, Confer takes out Thompson, and this could be a key loss for Notre Dame if Thompson's not able to come back to mm. play. Mm. That was tough, a she very is up. tough challenge. The elbow came up too, watch Confer's elbow come up in, a, in just the side of the head as well as the, the body check. But Tiffany Thompson's a senior, she's waited for this, she's not about to step out of this one. This is Kate Fisher, headed out by Venturini. Van Lake collects. I think Chris Petroselli might have been uh, appealing for a harsher action there by Roger Taylor, the referee. Manthai tries to turn the corner on Danielle Egan. Nothing doing. It'll be a goal kick for North Carolina. Holly Manthai, an outstanding athlete who is becoming a better soccer player, and she got off to a pretty good start, Seamus. 30 <laughs> assists, leads the nation. And she can fly. She will be running as hard in the 90th minute as she was in the first. Exactly. And as you mentioned, she's up against number 14, Danielle Egan. And they had a great battle in the first match. And uh, we'll see a lot of them today. There's Egan now on the ball. And Manthar trying to close her down. Doesn't quite do it. Keller heads it on for Dacey. Dacey pumps it into the middle. And Renola controls. Venturini challenged by Thompson. Van Lake, Kelly, Keller. Now Daisy after it for Carolina. And it'll be a throw in for the Irish. Danielle Egan is questioning that as Amy Van Lake holds the ball, figuring that possession is nine tenths of the law, but Carolina is going to get it. And again, it is Angela Kelly going over to take it. She has such great range on the throw-ins. You'll see her taking them from both sides of the field. It's 1-0 North Carolina in the national championship game. We're about 18 minutes in. Kelly cranks it right up, but can't cut it across the middle quite enough. That'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. You gotta wonder about the psychological effect of this uh, this early deficit. It wasn't that early, but still 15 minutes into the game to be down one nothing uh, is a bit of a blow to, to Notre Dame. It could have been a lot worse that, given their early struggles, but they simply haven't put much attack together. They've been defending the whole game. Venturini's drive goes just Ooh. wide. She played a nice little one-two with Daisy, who laid the ball off. And again, Venturini saw the opening and accelerated into it. That's what makes Tisha Venturini a Player of the Year candidate. Yeah, absolutely. And look at this shot for, at the end of it. Uh, very little swerve on that ball, almost a knuckleball, just sailing by. But you can see why she is the leading shot taker. She's totally unafraid to surge forward uh, and take shots. And of course, you know, Carolina does have this other talent in midfield so that if a, forward, a midfielder does go forward like her to attack their others to, to stay behind and help out. Ashley Sharp clears the header, but Danielle Egan settles, goes for the volley, and that's going to go right out of here. <laughs> Egan has a real good sense of humor about the game. And she is... A really good runner. Seamus, it seems to be a gift that players either have or, or they don't have. 
and they can either see that opening and take advantage of it or they fail to. We have a substitution for Notre Dame as Amy Van Lake comes off and Julian Maughan goes in. Maughan right there, number 20. Kelly up to Dacey. Dacey tries to touch it on. Ashley Scharf is there for Notre Dame and again clears it wide, but Egan is there. Here's Dacey trying to turn Kate Fisher. Off of Fisher, it'll be a corner kick. Corner kick yeah. Well, interesting substitution there for Notre Dame. Van Lake comes out and she had been playing defense, as you mentioned. She actually was a forward uh, and transferred from the University of Arkansas where she scored a lot of goals. But um, I think uh, Mont may in fact be the more natural defender, although Van Lake is a terrific player. And uh, I think he's just trying to get this defense settled down. They look like they're having some trouble with positioning in the back four. Don Crow on the corner kick. All the way into the middle, Venturini's header saved, another shot, and uh, we are gonna get a foul called against North Carolina. Letitia Venturini, look out. She wears number 13 because when she was a kid, all the boys on the boys' team that she was playing on didn't want it. Well, they'd love it now because she's done great honor to that number. Look uh, at that. Uh, that's tremendous. Wonderful. Uh close up there of her as we can see in the, in the replay tremendous uh, shot of her rising in the air sort of holding hanging in the air and then just rocketing that header forward that's as i said at the very beginning her heading ability i think has been overlooked not by dorrance or, or her carolina teammates but uh, she's so good at other things that her heading has gone unnoticed but she is terrific in the air all right again carolina clears it up to midfield this is Kate Sobrero, Confer all over her. Sobrero turns it back for Sharp. Cindy Dawes and Venturini. Venturini gave her a little bit of a push, and that'll be a free kick to Notre Dame. Dawes wants to play it quickly. But you saw the pressure Confer was putting on Sobrero. They just uh, will not let defenders get an easy pass out of the back. They just keep pushing, punishing them uh, as much as possible. Now here comes Fisher. Kate Fisher cranks it up, and that chip goes a little bit wide. Now that was a little unfortunate uh, for Notre Dame there because Fisher made the good run, got herself open, and I think opted for the wrong choice, frankly. I mean, I think it was an attempted shot uh, because that was a point where they might have uh, been able to make, a, she might have been able to make a penetrating run to the penalty area, draw some defenders and, and uh, create a little bit of havoc there. I saw Anson Dorrance come right off the bench and yell something at his players uh, for allowing her that much freedom. Daisy has Egan on an overlap run and gives it to her. Here's Danielle Egan across the middle. Keller can turn it quickly into the middle. Renola stumbles, but she has it. Jen Renola, 47 starts in 47 games, had a career high of 11 saves against Carolina on the 2nd of October in the 0-0 tie in St. Louis. At this rate, she may top that today. But this has been a problem for them right here. This distribution out of the goalkeeping situation, there's Venturini winning it. A lot of the balls coming out of the goalkeeper are, are coming right back uh, into, their, into their own penalty area. They've got to do better with the distribution out of the back. Keller for Confer. Dawes comes across. Now Sobrero dumps it down the wing. The Dawn Crow is there on the post. Off of McCarthy, who's hustling. Crow now in a bit of trouble. The Guerrero comes over to help out. That's gonna go off Guerrero, it'll be a Carolina throw in. Were it not for a lone loss to George Mason in the 85 final, Carolina would be perfect. 38 and one all time in the tournament, 11 out of 12 championships, eight in a row and 28 straight victories since that 1985 championship game defeat. So Notre Dame is up against long odds and the Irish trail 1-0. That game, by the way, the first ever women's soccer game on ESPN. Uh, we want to go back. Uh, I've been around long enough to remember things like this. <laughs> we did check the record book, uh, but we did that game. Uh, it was an exciting game at George Mason. Confer tries to head on the throw in. Here's Venturini, who's taken over midfield, but there's a foul call before that play as Juan got pushed down by Wilson. And Notre Dame will move up. In the semifinal, Notre Dame composed itself against Portland during the timeout in the first half. Yep. And the game really changed from that point on. Let's see if Chris Petroselli again was able to settle his troops down and if ND will be able to mount something of an attack here against North Carolina, something it really hasn't been able to do. Here comes Tisha Venturini. 
Long up the right wing for Debbie Keller. She's got Confer in the middle. Keller for Confer. Goes down. Keller's got it. The chip back for Venturini and Dacey. Confer after it. Chipped out of there by Dawes. Kelly heads it. Confer volleying back to Sanchez first time. And that'll be a goal kick. But as you see North Carolina play so many one-time balls, that's got to be murder on a defense because they change direction and they change the point of attack so quickly. That's very true. In addition to which, they, uh, the, the one-touch passing is a, is a great asset, but also the running off the ball that goes with it. Uh, when those passes start going fast, you, you're, as a defender, you really get nervous. There's Venturini again, challenging for every ball in the air. And Cindy Dawes... Uh, was in a great position to head that, but she was out jumped by Venturini. Loose ball in midfield, Kelly with a big collision against Dawes, and Kelly is down. Play continues. Kelly says she's okay, and she's struggling to her feet. Confer contesting the ball with Kate Sobrero now, and it goes out of bounds, and Kelly is limping away. She's trying to walk it off as we look at Kerry Sanchez, and Angela Kelly's gonna be okay, but that was a heck of a collision. Keller going one on two, manages to get the throw in. Here's Angela Kelly. Yeah, very tough tackle in there by Dawes going in with two feet. Sometimes uh, referees will blow that up very, very quickly. They'll go right to the red yes, card off. right. Roger Taylor, though, uh, tends to let a lot of things go. Yes, Tiffany Thompson with the header from Notre Dame loose in the box. McCarthy tries to volley it clear. Egan is there for Carolina against Manthai. They battle. Scharf guns it off her own teammate. Egan settles. McCarthy now controlling for Notre Dame. Square pass out for Hartwig. Hartwig has Manthai a long way across. Couldn't get it to her. Maughan taps it back for Sobrero. Scharf challenged by Sanchez. So much defensive pressure by Carolina. This is coming only 30 yards from goal. Many times you'll see a team just drop back into a defensive posture. Not Carolina. They come right at right. you no matter where you are. And if as a defender, uh, you take uh, on the ball, trying to bring it forward, you take the easy outlet pass to relieve pressure from yourself, all that does is add more pressure to the receiver because they bring players up in numbers uh, because they're totally confident about their recovery. Dawes has Fisher going away, but it's an errant pass. Egan gives it right to Manthai. Manthai has Hartwig on a long diagonal. Here goes Jody Hartwig. She's got Guerrero middle. The chip goes off to on Crow. Looked like a handball. They're going to let it go. Crow sends it out of bounds. Wow. Excellent, excellent <laughs> reaction from attack Don there. Crow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she knew she dodged a bullet. I think that one uh, hit one of the hands on the way up. Confer clears. Keller. Comes back into a space. Good challenge by Vaughn. Tiffany Thompson now with it for Notre Dame. To Scharf. Distributing to Kate Fisher. Fisher goes straight up ahead for McCarthy. Wearing Wilson. Loses control. This is Keller laying it off for Wilson. Long ball for Egan. Fisher was back. Keller gets it right back, and Egan is there this time into the corner. Confer racing toward the middle. Danielle Egan with a bit of a delay against Fisher. Now chips for Dacey. Dacey will try the turn. Can't get it around Thompson. Manthai can't clear. He comes into the middle. Dangerous ball here. Sharp, high in the air. Venturini's blast is wide. Boy, as a midfielder, uh, you love to lurk around the edge of the penalty area, <laughs> waiting for that ball that squibs out and uh, gives you a chance. And we'll see at the end of this flurry, there's a, a very poor clearance, and it comes right out off this carom right here to Venturini, who has been lurking and waiting and just misses by about a yard uh, outside that post. Off the goal kick in midfield, Guerrero with Santana on her back. Ross Santana jumps over and wins the ball. Egan couldn't control, but now Venturini does. A volley toward the corner for Dacey. Kate Fisher turns it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for North Carolina. You wonder how the ball manages to find that kind of skillful player at the top of the box. It just seems uncanny. It gets there, and uh, of course it's not accident. It's just her placement. Egan's cross, headed on into the middle of the cod for loose for Dacey. Couldn't find the handle. Venturini shot chips and goes over the bar. Whew. 
The uh, pressure is unrelenting. And that was a surprise to me that uh, Venturini didn't put that one away. She really hit it poorly. I think she was falling away as she was trying to take it. As we look uh, at the rebound, yeah, it was sort of had to reach back for it, and she scuffed under it and put it over the top. So we'll have a corner kick now to follow that up. It went off Ashley Scharf, and Terry Sanchez again will take the corner kick. We're about 30 minutes into the first half. North Carolina leads Notre Dame 1-0. The game has not been as close as the score. In the middle of the goal line, Manola gets a piece of it. Now Dawes tries to clear for Notre Dame. Egan can't control, but she's going to have plenty of help behind her if she chooses to send the ball back. But she throws it right back into the middle. Dawes now for Notre Dame. Ahead for Guerrero. Guerrero looking long for Manthai. Manthai trying to split Wilson and Egan. Manthai still has it, has McCarthy going away. Here's Michelle McCarthy with a chance. She lines it up. The drive is deflected. It will be a corner kick for Notre Dame. Good wow. effort by Wilson to get back. Tremendous run by Wilson. And uh, I think uh, McCarthy is going to really wonder if she hesitated a little bit too long here. She takes the ball and it's dribbling away from goal and has to take the extra step to get the shot in. And that extra step was what gave Wilson the chance to come back. Watch the extra step here. There's the step, and that gives Wilson just the chance to block it away. Well, the crowd clearly on Notre Dame's side because the stands are rumbling for the first time today as Holly Manthai gets prepared to take the corner kick. Exactly. I think uh, got a stoppage in play. Yeah, Megan McCarthy has a bloody. Oh no, it's Kate not, Sobrero. Uh, not Megan. Excuse me, it's Kate Sobrero. And that's uh, a key loss because Sobrero scored the goal on a corner kick yeah. in the semifinal. She uh, she's bleeding from the nose. I think that's the problem. Um, and she has been taken out because, the, quite properly, by the referee, you're not allowed to to play with uh, blood flow um, at the time. Another health precaution. Statement of our times, unfortunately. Here's Manthai's corner kick. Comes all the way back out to Mon. Mon turns on Wilson. Manthai on the right side beats Sanchez. She goes to the corner. Manthai's cross. Far post for Mon. Can't bicycle it into the middle. Crow clears for Dacey. Dacey has Egan going away on the wing. Now Egan across for Keller. Confer. And also Daisy. Here's Daisy with Confer charging middle and Sanchez coming up behind. Good play by Sharp, but Daisy gets it back again into the middle. Headed out by Hartwig. This is very good soccer. End to end stuff. Good crosses. You saw on it the bicycle kick at the other end attempt. Uh, some good breakaway stuff. Very entertaining, these two teams. Keller for Daisy. Daisy for Venturini with some room. She can accelerate, but Sharp is there to tackle it away. Dawes turns it back. Can Notre Dame counter quickly? Blocked by Kelly, it comes to Sanchez. Kelly's straight ahead for Venturini. Sobrero has returned to the game. She's marking Robin Confer right there. Confer has a gun on both sides. Tackled away, comes right to Kelly, the shot just wide. Whoa, what a break. Two breaks, a very lucky break for Carolina to get the ball in there in the first place off the carom. Um, to Keller. You see the touch back there and it goes right to her. She's not offside. She picks her corner, but just uh, cuts it a little bit too thin. Ball coming right to her. She's got the whole goal. Picks a corner, which is a good idea, but was just off the mark. Tisha Venturini in midfield again. Moving on Sobrero. Sanchez against Hartwig. Sanchez tries the speed move to the baseline, goes into the middle, headed out of there by Thompson. Sobrero clears straight up the field. McCarthy turns it off to Mon here. Mon misplays the ball. Sanchez collects, runs into Guerrero. Now it's Confer on the wing for North Carolina, and Hartwig just guns it off the side of the stadium, and we'll get a throw in. It's great to see these wide players uh, take on their opponents uh, as we uh, saw just then a wonderful uh, Jody Hartwig in our picture. She was taken on a by Confer, and at either end, there were these players are willing to just go one-on-one -on -one and uh, duke it out. It's really a very attractive style. Kelly, the long throw for Keller, almost on the end line. Hartwig clears. Don Crow has it. Chips it right back into the box, headed out of there by Fisher. Mon settles. Wilson on her. Turns it up. 
Egan is behind Manthai. Manthai tries to steal. Crow recovers it. Carolina comes at you in twos. One player goes after the ball, and the other player is there to cover. Here's Robin Contra with a burst of speed, a little chip shot. And Ranola makes the save. That ball had deceiving pace on it, James. Yep, it did. And uh, I'd say at the other end, uh, Manthai has just a couple of times been within a fraction of a good breakaway. We saw her do it once uh, a couple of minutes ago, but a few other times she's just been uh, dispossessed by Danielle Egan, uh, but she's won her share from Danielle too. Cindy Dawes settling things down. Vaughn had a bad hop. This field is in tremendous shape considering the weather. Considering anything, but it is in tremendous shape. And that's one of the rare bad bounces you see. We had uh, rain cascading down here yesterday and last night, and uh, this, this field is in remarkable shape uh, given how much rain fell on it. It's terrific. A couple of substitutions now coming in for Carolina. This is a standard fare for them. I think Aubrey Falk will be one of them. We've got a foul throw, and uh, we'll come back to Notre Dame here. Aubrey Falk will be coming into yep. the game, as will Nell Fettig. Yep. Now, well, there's a stoppage, and Station Masters will be checking in for Notre Dame. Wilson through traffic, up for Debbie Keller. That's Sanchez on the go along with Keller. Sobrero back. Keller's chip intercepted, but Confer is on it. Confer against Cindy Dawes. Turns it for Keller. Keller can turn beautifully also. Comes square to Venturini, going one on two. Dawes takes it. Venturini wins it back. Sanchez walks toward the top of the box. Her shot off Sobrero. Mon gives it right to Kelly. There's an opportunity where Mon could have settled the ball, but elected to play it quickly, and it hurt her. Keller now with a chance. Tiffany Thompson has it off of Daisy. And now again, Dawes tries to settle things down for ND. Manthai against Egan. Egan not giving any ground, using the arm. She's finally going to get called for the push. She could have come two or three seconds earlier. And Roger Taylor's going to give her a talking to, but not a booking. Well, a senior against a freshman. And Manthai holds her own very well, and Egan holds her too. <laughs> but eventually, uh, clearly does commit the foul. But uh, that's nice to see Manthai survive that kind of challenge. I mean, that's uh, what you got to be able to do against the uh, champion caliber of a uh, team like Carolina. Got to be composed and just keep battling. Ashley Sharp to the top of the box, headed away by Kelly. Vaughn's shot hits Wilson and comes back out to Sobrero. And Ashley Sharp will start it again for Notre Dame. Up ahead for Tiffany Thompson. This is Fisher. Serves it for Guerrero, intercepted by Santana. And we're going to get a foul called against the Irish, and it'll be a Carolina free kick. Some good interpassing there by Notre Dame when they when they move the ball th uh, into this midfield and then quickly wide, they seem to have a little bit more space in which to play. And I'm sure uh, Petroselli, the coach, will be talking to them a little bit about uh, their distribution. It's improved dramatically from the early part of the game when it was just hopeful long balls down the middle. They're now getting themselves open. They've settled. A lot better, and as you said, uh, Jack, maybe because of the, uh, the composing of the timeout, the uh, you know the chance to chat about things and uh, catch your breath. Keller for Venturini, but again, Jen Ranola controls the penalty area for Notre Dame. Less than eight minutes to go, first half, 1-0 North Carolina. And I don't think they are uh, sticking to a tight man, a one-on-one -on -one marking situation with Venturini now, because uh, certainly Tiffany. Thompson has uh, dropped off her and Dawes was on her for a while, but at the moment I think they're just sort of trying to play, a, if you will, almost a zonal defense about her and just pick her up as she comes through. And that, you know, frankly, I think that's in many ways better. Unless you have an enormously talented, uh, gifted defensive midfielder who's, who's got some speed, it's very difficult to pick out some individual on a championship day and say, all right, your job is to, is to take care of their best player. Pretty tough to, task to pull off. Here's Michelle McCarthy. She goes around Roz Santana. Santana recovers. McCarthy tries the pace move. Santana <laughs> takes it away. Fisher is there. Fisher up the wing intended for Manthai. Deflects out of bounds. It'll be a Notre Dame throw in. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three. 
Manthai challenged by Egan. That is probably the best one-on-one -on -one matchup we've seen today. Manthai and Egan, and it's been a spirited one as we saw Egan's foul earlier. And a foul. Um, now, there, here's a chance now for Notre Dame. They do not have a lot of tall players in attack, but they can certainly bring up uh, some folks from the back to get in on these set situations. Uh, and Sobrero has gone up. Tiffany Thompson told us yesterday that most of Notre Dame's runs on their set plays are not uh, adjustable to where the ball is going. They run, they know where they're going, and they're supposed to get the ball there from the server. Kate Sobrero getting up in the air. Hartwick brings it down, but Kerry Sanchez picks her clean. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. This is Hartwig. Mon, hit for Sobrero. Sanchez challenges. Kelly is there for Carolina. Nice outlet for Confer. Comes square for Keller. Venturini is ahead. Dacey's on the far right. Confer's all alone on the left wing if they see her. And they did, but a little bit too late. Confer comes away with it. Gary Sanchez into the corner for Venturini. Venturini plays it on the ground for Keller. Thompson comes over in the challenge. Now Hartwig in a race with Sanchez. Sanchez is there first, gets tripped. It'll be a free kick for Carolina. Oh, such a good move by Sanchez, though, to uh, fake it one way and then drag the ball the other and, dr and draw the tackle and the foul. And now Sanchez, who's such a good crosser of the ball, either she or Dawn Crow will come up to take this one. I think it's probably be Crow, it who's got such a nice uh, educated left foot. Crow goes short, intended for Confer. McCarthy just pops it out of there to relieve the pressure. Roz Santana half volleys it for Dacey. We're going to get an offside called as Carolina was a little Where's slow coming out of the penalty area. Four and a half minutes to go first half. North Carolina leads Notre Dame 1-0 in the national championship game. One of the things that's impressed me over the years as, as the women's soccer has gotten better and better and better is their ability to play with their back to the goal inside the penalty area. I mean, this is a very notable quality of, uh, that's fun to watch and see in their players on both of these teams who are very comfortable on receiving passes with their back to goal in the penalty area and doing something constructive with it, creative and constructive. In midfield, who else? Venturini laying it off for Kelly. Kelly for Keller. Keller back for Egan. Egan up for Dacey. Fisher gives her a problem. It comes out of bounds. Good play by Kate Fisher. Next, next uh, three and a half, four minutes uh, are really very crucial for Notre Dame. They have, they have good, strong fitness level, as we saw in their game against Portland, but uh, they do not want to give up a second goal against a powerhouse like Carolina. So they would rather be at 0-0, of course. Well, they'd much rather be 1-0 up, but... Uh, play by Sharp. Play, yes. She played the little 1-2 off of Dacey there and gets the throw-in for Notre Dame. Guerrero coming back, but Egan pops it into the penalty area. Keller contests with Tiffany Thompson. Thompson clears for Notre Dame. Sanchez and Hartwig race for the ball. Sanchez there for Carolina. Quickly plays it up for Venturini. Dawes is on it, though. Dawes back for Sobrero. Sobrero turns it into the middle of the field. Two Carolina players run into each other, but Venturini ends up with the ball. Dawes wins it away from her. Good, tough play. And Dawes is now, looks like she is, in fact, looking out for Venturini defensively a lot more than had been the case in the previous 10 minutes. So they're maybe trying to be sure that nothing goes through Venturini in the last uh, couple of minutes that could prove dangerous. She did that for the entire game in St. Louis on October 2nd in the 0-0 tie, and Chris Petroselli felt that Notre Dame was giving up too much offense by having Dawes have that defensive responsibility, but you got to stop Carolina from scoring first, I guess, in, uh, in his mind, seeing what's going on today. Finally, we uh, get an end line, and I'm not sure if we're going to get these substitutions or not, as Kate Sobrero's nose is bleeding once again. Station Masters is coming on for Notre Dame and Guerrero is going off and we are getting three substitutions for Carolina as well now as we approach two minutes to go in the half. Vanessa Rubio number 20 checks in. That is Masters. Also in the game Aubrey Falk a freshman who has a goal and Nell Fettig number 22 who was the 1994 
Parade National Player of the Year in high school last year. And that's a good look at Fedek. She replaced with a pro, a sweeper, uh, which we saw in the semifinal also. And I think Confer has come out uh, and Dacey has come out. So two forwards and a sweeper. And we have one more for Notre Dame. Amy Van Lake is now coming on. As, um, I think that they are once again trying to stop the bleeding with Kate Sobrero. And there is Van Lake. Sobrero on the bench. Looking well at the moment. Holding a minute and 11 to go in the half. As Fedig takes it at the top of the box. Sanchez one time. Long clears. Fedig one times it right back into the box. And an offside against North Carolina as Debbie Keller got caught in a little bit too close to the goal. We're in the final minute of play. First half, 1-0 North Carolina leads Notre Dame in the national championship game. Santana chops down Masters and Deal play it quickly. Here's Mon coming square. Now goes right wing intended for Hartwig. Couldn't get it to her. Sanchez on the header for Rubio. Mon settles. Mon's chip ahead past McCarthy and Fedding belts it up into the center circle for Keller. Thompson's pass intercepted by Egan. Aubrey Falk, the freshman, lays it off for Sanchez. Sanchez is chipped toward the penalty arc. Venturini is there. Rubio has it on a hop, leaves it off for Falk. Falk's drive goes over the top. It'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame in the final 10 seconds of a first half. Dominated by North Carolina. The Tar Heels have a 1-0 lead on a goal by Angela Kelly. Notre Dame might be lucky to be this close, but that bodes well for the Irish in the second half as they take on Anson Dorrance's dynasty, which is gunning for its ninth straight NCAA championship. Anson Dorrance and North Carolina leading 1-0 at halftime against Notre Dame. And this site here in Portland was a predetermined site. Previously, uh, in many years, the championship had to be decided based on who the four semifinalists would be and pick a campus site. Well, uh, next year is also predetermined, and guess where it's going? <laughs> it's going right back, back to where the previous four were held. <laughs> back Chapel to North Hill. Yeah, that's right, back to North Carolina. So if they win today, uh, I should think the odds are pretty long that they will be back again to defend. Although this is a senior-laden team, six seniors. Six seniors in the starting lineup and 10 on the roster. Well, Notre Dame down a goal, needing to press the offense a little bit. Here's Cindy Dawes dumping it down, but Dawn Crow is there. Crow has seen an awful lot of action, and she has been so solid. Jody Hartwig's cross, Venturini he is there. Dawes now with the move, and she'll crank it up from 30, and Noonan makes her first save of the afternoon. Good shot, nice, uh, kept nice and low, did not sail over the top. Dawes, uh, that may be indicative of uh, something we're gonna see in the second half, which is, as you mentioned earlier, maybe a bit more release forward from Dawes to attack. And those substitutes that came in for Carolina just before the break, uh, they didn't get much time to play. They're all, they're back on the bench and the first team is in there again. This is Dacey turning it back for Venturini and uh, we're gonna get an offside call. So Crow is back at sweeper, and Dacey is back in, and Confer back in up front. Jen Ranola's boot for Dawes, who's the target, to McCarthy. McCarthy, very well skilled, beautiful ball for Hartwig. Sanchez is marking her. Hartwig tries the move for the corner. Crow is there to collect. And again, Carolina comes at you in twos. Yep. Sanchez went for the tackle knowing that Crow was there. And Sanchez gave her just enough of a bump uh, to set her up for the second tackle uh, and got away with it. But uh, impressive speed by Hartwig uh, with the ball there, about to take the throw in. Uh, looking like uh, she could uh, really outpace Sanchez. Wilson across the sideline. And again, it'll be a Notre Dame throw in. Well, this is really the most sustained action Notre Dame has had in the Carolina end in the game, and it is only 1-0. Here's Kate Sobrero now on the throw in. McCarthy banged by Wilson and Sanchez, and again, it's a Notre Dame throw in. Sobrero quickly, Wilson already back toward the middle of the field. Confer picks it up, and uh, it'll be a throw in for North Carolina here. 
And as you say, probably another 35 yard heave uh, by <laughs> Kelly. Out toward midfield, but Sobrero wins it. It comes right back to Sanchez, who boots it out of bounds. A lot of turnovers in the early going here from North Carolina. The Tar Heels are really not in their rhythm yet in the second half. Perhaps that's a result of Dawes getting that shot in the first 30 seconds and trying just to open a new chapter for Notre Dame. Dawes over Venturini. Guerrero sending it ahead for Hartwick, but Sanchez is back laying it off for Crow. Venturini tips it to Confort. Sobrero marking her. Confort goes down. It's out of bounds off of Sobrero, and it'll be North Carolina's throw in. And Sanchez, as we look at her, making a very good. Uh, no, no, that's not. That's Confort. That's Confort, excuse me. Sanchez made a very good retreating run there, uh, sensing once again a possible break down the right by Hartwick, because clearly. Um, uh, the Notre Dame tactic is to try to make some flank attack. It's tough to, very tough to go through the middle. And uh, maybe they can make some progress down the side. Here's Noonan's boot. Keller heads it on for Venturini, a little flip. Fisher volleys it. Egan on the header. Keller lays it off for Venturini. Venturini trying the chip off of Thompson. Egan to Venturini. Bond marking her. Kelly hammered from behind by Guerrero. Well, if you're going to get whistled for a foul, you might as well take him down hard. Good move by Kelly, anticipating the rush from behind and uh, steps into the oncoming challenge. You see her move this to the left. Well, maybe she didn't move. She was just bowled over. But one of the things you very often do is move into the challenge to, uh, to draw the foul. Here's Dawn Crow who can serve the ball so well. She goes directly for the shot. And Ranola makes the save. That was a 45-yarder with a little bit of sting on it, just in case Notre Dame was playing the pass. Sobrero back for Hartwig and Sanchez. Again, forward pressure by North Carolina, and it produces a loose ball. Dawes now, Danielle Egan. Up ahead for Dacey, who wins the race against Fisher. Manthai comes over to help out for the Irish. Off of Egan, it'll be Notre Dame's throw. Manthai takes it quickly from McCarthy. It goes over her, and it goes over Wilson. And Crow clears it out of bounds. Holly Manthai will take it again. Julie Mond, pushed by Kelly. Play on, says Roger Taylor, the referee. Venturini into the middle. Sobrero there. Beating Confort to the ball. Just good possession now by Notre Dame. Much Stern. better aggressiveness yep. from the Irish also. Here comes Dawes with the run. She's got a big shot. Taken down by Kelly on a clean tackle. Guerrero turns it back for Maughan. Maughan bothered by Confort. She grabs the ball. It's going to be a handball. And we'll see if the Irish set up some kind of set play here from about 25 yards, 26 yards away maybe. Cindy Dawes uh, over the ball at the moment uh, is looking so much more dangerous now in the second half as she's uh, clearly committed more to attack. So maybe they are taking the uh, let's go for it idea very early in this half. Dawes goes directly for the shot. It goes off of Kelly. Sanchez recovers. McCarthy at the penalty arc stopped on the Egan tackle. Long off Egan. Keller takes it down off her shoulder. Dacey now racing upfield. Mond coming back. Nice ball up ahead for Keller, but Fisher was there to intercept. Venturini settles, trying to chip down the wing for Egan. Headed back by Fisher off Dacey. Keller now pops it toward the penalty arc. Ashley Scharf is there for Notre Dame. Scharf just mishits it out of bounds. It'll be a North Carolina throw in. Thought the Irish might go for something a little bit fancier there off the free kick, Seamus, but uh, maybe uh, they thought that the best opportunity was for Dawes just to gun it. Yeah, well, she picked out a spot in the wall that she thought she could get it through, but it was uh, headed away. Scharf just blasts it clear to take off some pressure. Dawn Crow running it down. McCarthy challenges. Off McCarthy, good hustle. That kind of stuff eventually pays off for you. Well, anything that uh, Notre Dame can do to prevent Carolina from having a lot of that possession in their own end uh, is, worth, is worth the extra effort. As you say, it does pay off. 
because of their persistence pays off. Carolina does. When they keep the ball down at your end of the field, they're just going to get goals. There's no question about it. Notre Dame looking much more aggressive in midfield on the free balls and a lot more settled. And Carolina not looking nearly as fluid as it did in the first half, but I don't know if Carolina can play too much better than it did, uh, save maybe scoring a few more goals. They had so many opportunities. Wilson clears it off of Guerrero's effort, and the Irish get a throw in. Kate Fisher to take it. In demand, thigh. She turns on Egan quickly ahead for McCarthy, drops it off. Guerrero's one timer into the middle beyond Dawes. Sanchez bangs it back. Sobrero chips it right back toward the top of the penalty arc. Wilson took it in the nose. She goes down. Dawes drops it off for Mond as now we stop play. And Stacy Wilson, the freshman from Herndon, Virginia, is down. They're going to stop time and uh, get the trainer onto the field. I think she did take a shot to the face here. Yeah. Um, she went for the ball and got Dawes's head. Yeah, it seemed to be. It seemed to be that way exactly. Well, Wilson is only 5'1", and Dawes is 5'7", and that was about the difference there. Wilson got up a little bit higher, but Dawes had body position, and Wilson, in her eagerness to try to reach over the top and get to the head, uh, just uh, had a fearsome collision there. Well, Anson Darren's got to be a little concerned here because Stacy Wilson is such a good jumper. Uh, you said she is only 5'1", but she really is one of those people who has a very good jumping ability, gets off the ground wonderfully well. We saw Venturini with good jumping ability earlier. Um, Michelle Akers Stahl, who used to be, uh, who is still very much uh, in the picture of the national women's team and uh, played at Central Florida, uh, is a great goal scorer, probably the, maybe the best in the world. And her, he, she too has great jumping ability. It's a very important physical um, asset in this game to be able to time and make athletic jumps. Well, Stacy Wilson is sitting up, and that is good news. And Jane Byers will check into the game for North Carolina well, in Wilson's place. That's, that's a fairly even trade in many ways. Jane Byers is almost a carbon copy, uh, tremendously aggressive. Although she's 4'11", so she's that's giving right. up even more. That's right. <laughs> True. Uh, but very tough, uh, tenacious tackler. One-on-one, -on -one, loves the one-on-one -on -one challenge, does very well with it. Here's Scharf back to Renola. Scharf. Head for McCarthy. Kelly gives it away to Fisher. She comes up with the pressure from behind by Dacey. Manthai plays it ahead. Crow has it unopposed for North Carolina. Thompson and Keller on the head. Ashley Scharf for Mon. She turns. Manthai takes it down out of the air. McCarthy, nice, nice trap. And now she looks for someone making a run. Lays it off for Dawes, confronted by Venturini. A couple of national team players right there. Here's Mon coming down the left side. Manthai turns around Dacey. Crow takes it away. Tiffany Thompson settles quickly ahead for Dawes. Touches it ahead for Guerrero. Santana is on her, and Roz Santana chips it clear. And now it's very much uh, Notre Dame dictating a little bit of the pace of the game here. Carolina always looks to have a little bit of the superior speed, but uh, some very good work in midfield with Dawes in particular and Mantha here on the ball. Uh, likewise has done some very nice uh, quick one-touch passing. And they're taking the game away from Carolina at this point, very much so. And I think uh, you know, this lack of possession by Carolina is not something that they're used to experiencing or that uh, we're used to seeing. But here they come on the counterattack. Kelly for Venturini. She's got Keller on the left and makes the good pass. But Sobrero, good marking. Venturini gets it back. The volley scores! Tisha Venturini makes it 2-0 North Carolina. Well, that's that's the price you pay sometimes when they bring players forward. They kind of they got a bit flat on the back. Notre Dame did, and Venturini uh, capitalized on a on a bit of a carom. But here the break, the ball played through, a good defensive hustle. But the ball comes right to Venturini. She flips it up and then whacks it on the volley. Pretty good skills there. Yeah, but look at this ball come now. Here's a little flick off the thigh and then the half volley into the corner. That is mighty impressive. 
very impressive for Tisha Venturini, who had been doing a fair amount of running and chasing in the last uh, 10 minutes of this game as Notre Dame had begun to take over midfield. Well, that is the first time since the 11th of September that Notre Dame has given up more than one goal in a game. And oh, by the way, it's starting to sprinkle and maybe the storm clouds are gathering against the Irish because uh, they have to make up an awful lot of ground now. Coming from two down against Carolina is almost impossible. Egan takes down Manthai, and it'll be a free kick well, for Notre Dame. And it is discouraging to them, Jack, because they really had begun to find a bit of a rhythm of play and had looked as though they really uh, belonged there. And uh, you see Petroselli, I think, ha had to be heartened by what was going on for the previous 10 minutes. But you're always worrying about what if, what if you lose possession in midfield, you put too many players forward, um, and you're suddenly in a, a two against two breakaway. A two against two breakaway very much is in favor of North Carolina, and that's how the goal came. Kate Fisher's looping pass up ahead for Holly Manthai. She's working against Danielle Egan. Nice little heel touch for Mon, but Mon runs hard into Aubrey Falk. Falk is into the game as is Nell Fettig for North Carolina. There was a substitution after the goal. Egan will tee up the free kick. Yeah, there's a tough, tough challenge uh, by Venturini on uh, Mond. There's one challenge, there's the second challenge, and there's the... <laughs> Good thing they're not tearaway shorts. That's right. <laughs> this is a family program. <laughs> Tiffany Thompson going for the header for Notre Dame. Vanessa Rubio trying to settle. Kate Sobrero comes away for ND. Stopped by Kelly. Off to Egan. Egan chips for Keller in the box. Renola is out to gather it for Notre Dame. 33 minutes to go in the national championship game. Notre Dame down by two goals. Dawes against Kelly on the head. Now Venturini volleys, heads, and keeps on coming. Ahead for Vanessa Rubio. Rubio against Sobrero with Hartwig back in support. That's Keller for North Carolina. She turns it off. Sobrero, corner kick for North Carolina. Kate Sobrero had that bloody nose in the first half, and too bad because uh, she is such a fine player. We saw her offensively scoring on a corner kick, and also she's a great marking back for the Irish. She's done an excellent job for them. Kerry Sanchez drives it into the middle. The header comes all the way through. Rubio volleys it up in the air. Dawes heads it out. Fetting toward the corner against McCarthy. Can't turn it, and it'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. Well, if we thought the first half was Tisha Venturini's with seven shots against a total of two for Notre Dame, uh, and we featured some near misses, maybe she was watching at that time saying, all right, you guys, enough of the near miss stuff, but that goal was wonderful. And here Here's she comes Venturini again. Venturini again with a drive, and it goes off sharp. Sobrero volleys it out. Hartwig. Sanchez on the pressure of Hartwig with a nice move to get around her. Now will someone make a run to get open? There's Mon. She turns it for Thompson. Thompson, nice counter building here for Notre Dame. Dawes has Manthai on a run on the left wing. Up ahead for McCarthy. McCarthy turns on Byers. Great move to the top of the arc. Couldn't beat the third player as Raul Santana stripped it clean. Now it comes out to Hartwig on the right wing. She's going to let it roll out for a throw in. Nell Fettig clears for Carolina. Great piece of work, though, by Michelle McCarthy. Terrific dribbling of what we were talking about at the top of the show. Great dribbling in, in traffic. Wonderful ability to, uh, to stay on top of the ball, not to be knocked off it, uh, and to continue the flow of the attack. And that was an enterprising attack. Here she is on the ball again. Working against Byers. And Sanchez comes over to help. It'll be a corner for Notre Dame. Well, this is where they need something, right here. Uh, with, what, about 30 minutes to go and two down. If you look on the goal line, you see number 13, Sobrero, there in white. And she and Tiffany Thompson occasionally make a run, which comes outward into the box, creating some space, a little bit of a vacuum behind her. Stacia Masters is into the game for Notre Dame, replacing Julie Mon, who comes off. And that is a forward for a midfielder. Manthai's corner, loose in front, and it'll be a goal kick for North Carolina. 
Well, a good effort coming yeah. off the line as Sobrero, I believe, was the target player on it, but uh, she couldn't quite turn that for the shot. It was a very good corner kick. They've uh, they've had some in the past uh, that have been in swinging, and that one was uh, aimed for the edge of the box. Another substitution about to be made. I think this is Stacy Wilson who's going to try to get back into this thing. Roz Santana will come out. Yep. Well, Wilson is tough. She plays as if her body's just never going to break. And it may have been dented, but she is back. For North Carolina, replacing number seven, Roz Santana. Seamus, it's amazing how physical the women's game has gotten in the last couple of years as the skill level also has come up. Yeah, no, it's very it's very true that uh, there's been a lot of emphasis placed on uh, endurance and on physical strength in training, uh, which is very much a part of the game for men and for women. But that's been a notable change. But I think it's, you know, the, the heartening thing about it is it's restrained physical stuff. It's not, it's not any of the nasty violence that we don't want to see in the game. Egan, long cross for Keller, headed out by Scharf. Dawes, nice touch in traffic for Fisher, but Egan is there. Manfi boots it. Kelly for Rubio against Sobrero. Sobrero just runs her right off the ball. There's an example of physical play. She just used her strength and took the ball away. Venturini, Kelly runs into McCarthy. Play on, says Roger Taylor. Ashley Scharf with the header. Egan banks it to Keller. Nice touch off to Egan. Egan a little flick on for Keller. Scharf is there, volleys it right back toward the middle though. Manthai clears for Notre Dame. McCarthy with a little bit of space on the left. Ahead for Masters. Fetting off of Masters. It'll be a Carolina throw in. It's very tough to come back uh, two goals down to North Carolina. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's probably happened, I suspect, but maybe it has. But it's uh, one of those statistics that you wouldn't think of in the in the uh, reams and reams and pages. We asked of the other day; they couldn't think of one. <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> and again, Carolina moves down the field. The uh, sideline throw-ins often effective in advancing the ball. Sanchez for Venturini. Thompson marking her off of Thompson. It's beginning to rain here now at Merlot Field, and the surface will slicken up pretty quickly. Off of the handle, Scott. Masters has a chance against Fedick. Masters for Guerrero. Comes all the way through to McCarthy. Back for Guerrero. Wilson is there on the tackle. Fedick clears. Good attack, though, by Notre Dame. Very enterprising. That ball is out of play, so it's going to be a throw in. But uh, attack down the flanks, a quick pass into the middle, and then the first touch pass, trying to uh, get right into the, the shooting area. It almost uh, pulled off. And you got to like that Notre Dame style. There's no question about it. They just uh, are not quite uh, up there, I, would, I think, in terms of the experience and uh, overall composure uh, that uh, these so-called underdogs have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, polls aren't always correct, and, and up to this point, Carolina certainly has been the better of the two teams. Fisher down into the corner, but Manthai was not there. I think Ross Santana is about to come back in, probably for Byers. Yep. For about 19 minutes into the second half. Roz Santana, who played sweeper last year for Carolina, but has played all over the field for the Tar Heels this year. Venturini, between two Notre Dame players, had to go off her back. Sometimes the ball finds you. Falk, contested by Fisher. It'll be a Notre Dame throw off of Falk. Manthai. Egan is there, touches it out. Manthai will do it again. Guerrero against Santana. Wilson punts it into the stands. When uh, Carolina got a three-goal lead in the semifinal against Connecticut, the game was, in fact, over for all intents and purposes, and it sort of petered out. Uh, Notre Dame has got, I think, a, a bit more skill than Connecticut had, so they could bring Here's it to Matt life. Here's Manthai on the cross, and Fedig chests it away. Masters going for it. Manthai is there, and it'll be a corner kick. 
as Egan touched it out of bounds. Holly Manthi, the nation's assist leader with 30. McCarthy in short to provide an option for Manthi on the corner. And again, Sobrero and Thompson are on the line offensively for the Irish. Noonan going for it with Thompson and Noonan playing well in the air. Tracy Noonan was pretty much splitting time with Shelly Finger well, earlier this season, but she has become the number one in the playoffs. And in a crowd of players, does very well to get her hands behind that ball and hold on to it with Tiffany Thompson all over her, trying to make the, the header because, as you say, as I said, if they can get one goal, um, that uh, puts them in a, in a, obviously in a much better position than now, but they also have the, the skill and the enthusiasm, I think, to capitalize on it and not just to have it be a consolation. They really could get back in this thing if they could just get one, uh, get a, one to, to land for them. And they've got about 23 minutes left to go. Vanessa Rubio with a nice move on Kate Fisher. Fisher hustling back, but now it's Egan with the ball, laying it back to Rubio. She's got Venturini, but couldn't quite get it to her. So many great runs by Carolina creating options, but here comes Dawes on the quick counter for Notre Dame, taking on Sanchez. The pass over to McCarthy. She has trouble with Angela Kelly. McCarthy for Manthai. Manthai plays it toward the corner. Egan coming over on defense. Chip into the middle with a great stab by Noonan, who comes out and controls the air. Wow, tremendous save. Tremendous save by Noonan to come out and pick that cross off. This is what we talked about at the top, where, you know, she will be needed to make a couple of good saves. And look at this. Good, good steps first, and then the dive. It's so important in good goalkeeping is to take the right number of steps before you launch yourself. Uh, to get to the ball, otherwise you're you're just simply not going to get there. And uh, that was perfectly timed and beautifully held. Steady rain now, and Notre Dame steadier on the attack. A through ball for Guerrero working on Santana. It deflects out of bounds, and it'll be a North Carolina throw-in. Well, Tracy Noonan, <laughs> you talk about athleticism. No question what she was doing there, and, and that's what you want for your goal from your goalkeeper. Make up your mind and go get it. Don't go halfway and change your mind. Exactly. And you still see, even at the highest levels, you see uh, that kind of hesitation sometimes. Uh, I saw it even in the, recently in, the, in the, <laughs> the Barcelona against Manchester United game that was on ESPN. You saw the Barcelona goalkeeper not acting with that kind of authority. You simply have to do it. And uh, it's impressive for her. She's a junior. And uh, as you mentioned, she was splitting time with Shelly Finger earlier, but now uh, she's, uh, she got the nod for the last few games and has uh, proven uh, that was a great decision. Out Sanchez up ahead for Keller. Keller runs over Sobrero. Notre Dame controls Tiffany Thompson off for Kate Fisher. Rubio giving the defensive pressure. Manfi working on Egan. Egan felt that Manthai might have gotten the best of her in the first meeting. There's a cross by Manthai, and it comes off of Wilson, and ooh, it'll be a corner kick. Manthai seems to be finding her game again. Well, that was close, too, on Wilson. Wilson had to play that ball on the skip off a wet surface and try to knock it away as we get some more substitutes coming in. Both front liners, Confer number 17 and Dacey number 16, so we'll see the starting forwards returning for North Carolina as Notre Dame's attack has been working a little bit better than Carolina's this half. Long ball into the middle, Noonan got bumped out of there and Wilson clears. Hartwig has a chance, lines it up, her drive goes off of Dacey and Noonan can't stop it from being a corner kick. More opportunities for Notre Dame. Interesting that uh, nothing got called there and she is talking to Roger Taylor about it. Um, it was a little hard to see who bumped her. It might have been one of her own players, in fact, but uh, sometimes that occurs because an opponent knocks your own player into you. But uh, she's not upset, gets her composure back. Here's Manthai's corner. Noonan controls in Tiffany Thompson's face. Well, she's been the key in the last couple of minutes. Tracy Noonan has been tested, and it really isn't common to see a Carolina goalkeeper tested, but the Tar Heels keepers are quite capable. Boy, Ellie Ever, I mean, she is, uh, those are such key situations with all those players lurking around there. A ball drops down there, and it easily ends up in the net. 
but uh, she's had really extraordinary uh, athletic ability, but also uh, good confidence, and that does so much for the, the team back there. They, they've worked hard to get their two-goal lead. They don't want to see it disappear in kind of a scramble in front of the net. 25 minutes gone, second half. We're going to have a timeout soon, and I wonder if that's going to work against Notre Dame here as they're carrying the play. Dawes is drive for the far post. Noonan is there again. Dawes with a good run there and a good decision, very good decision to put the ball into the goal area where Noonan is, but she just didn't cut, quite get enough swerve on that ball to pull it away from the goalkeeper. Dacey settles, but there's no one there to pass it to, and it goes out of bounds, and it's almost as if this is the old... Yankee Stadium where one end is tilted lower than the other one. Notre Dame is controlling the same way Carolina did in the first half. Okay, so you want to be a goalkeeper? Take a look at this. In the middle of all this crowd of players, along comes Thompson. She seems to uh, knock Noonan with her elbow and the ball gets cleared away. And then on your better moments, this is what you really want to do. Wait for it to come down, pick your spot and soar above everybody else, get your hands around it. Pull it down. Excellent uh, keeping by Noonan, and uh, uh, you can see the intensity there in her face. And Notre Dame's on the attack once again. Tiffany Thompson on the left side. It's 2-0 North Carolina, less than 20 minutes to go in the game. North Carolina looking for its ninth straight national championship. Dawes' blast deflects twice, and Noonan smothers it. Well, Noonan is getting a tremendous amount of action, and... Uh, doing extremely well, as you said, despite uh, being bumped once and uh, getting away with it. Uh, other saves have been terrific, and you saw her face a couple of minutes ago, the intensity on it, and that was when the ball was away from the goal area, when she's yelling instructions to defenders in front of her, and that's also what you want a good goalkeeper to do. You want her to be in, in touch, you want her to be in charge, you want her to be uh, well into the game, and she's into the game with a vengeance now, and Luckily, uh, and a good thing it is, too, because Notre Dame is really getting back into this thing. Yeah, it, it's not often that we've been able to say that the goalkeeper has kept Carolina in it in the last few minutes, but that really has been the case. Dacey heads it on for Keller. Keller, a short ball for Dacey. She has the corner. Now she comes across. Tipped on by Venturini. Sanchez gives chase. Sanchez one times it right back into the middle of the box. It comes all the way across. Confer scores! Robin Confer makes it 3-0 North Carolina, and the Tar Heels have virtually put a lid on their ninth straight national championship. And there it was again, Sheamus. Notre Dame carrying the play. Carolina makes the most of its opportunity. That's right. It just brought the ball down there maybe two, three times in the last uh, five minutes and the, the last ten minutes or so and come up with a couple of goals. But again, the thing that impresses me is the cross. The, the cross comes in. We just see the tail end of it. The contra gets away from her player and puts it in beautifully. Um, and now look at that cross that was taken. It gets a bit of a lucky deflection. Venturini can't get to it. But Confer just gets a nice, a quick left-footed volley on it. And the service that came in from the last, it might have been Sanchez, we'll see in a minute, was really um, a wonderfully uh, made decision, again, um, before, the, before um, maybe doing something else, like slowing the ball down, taking on a defender. She didn't. She turned and crossed it. Robin Confer is the real deal. She had 80 goals in her senior season of high school. That was last year. She was the 1994 Florida Player of the Year. And she is the real deal because she has now scored in six of her seven postseason games in this her freshman year. She may only be a freshman, but she's one of the most dangerous forwards in the country. Well, it just doesn't pay to get North Carolina mad at you, obviously. <laughs> I mean, uh, Notre Dame held into a tie, and now they've got a three-goal lead on them. Duke uh, beat them 3-2, uh, played them twice more, and conceded seven goals in two losses. So when you get Carolina upset, uh, you better be ready. But I have to give some credit to Notre Dame here because they, on the score sheet and on the stat sheet, they looked like they were outclass. But that's not really the case for a good portion of this second half. They have played attractive stuff, and they have put together some good passes. And uh, you got to uh, you got to give them a lot of credit for the kind of soccer they're playing, and with you know a couple of good breaks and maybe a bobble by by Noonan and goal, it would, would be a, a different situation. Good, good. Stay here, stay here. They have carried much of the play. Here's Kate Sobrero on a run. Sobrero goes for the shot. Noonan is there. This is unprecedented pressure on a North Carolina goalie, from what I have ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Even in some of the ties or the rare losses through the years, 
most of the time, the, uh, the bulk of the play is down on the other end. Kelly goes for a tumble, but her feet were off the ground at the point of contact with Manthai, so it wasn't quite as bad as it looked. It's if your feet are anchored, that's when you get hurt. Boy, Manthai, what an amazing challenge that was. A little, a little close to going over the top of the ball, but she got all ball. But for a freshman, uh, just absolutely uh, unafraid, fearless uh, challenge there on an experienced player. She's very mature, an enormously mature player. As you look at players on the North Carolina bench, you can pretty much start designing the ring again. <laughs> it's become an annual right. Here's Robin Confer, Kate Sobrero marking her tightly. Confer for Venturini, for Keller. She can turn quickly and does. Venturini challenging Sharps clear. Thompson volleys it, but Kelly is there unchallenged. Kelly pops it for Venturini, lays it off for oh. Keller. Keller's drive, saved by Ranola, and she keeps it from going out of bounds. What a good piece of attacking play by Carolina. Again, Venturini with the good header and setting up the shot. She just does it all. Slide tackle by Kelly. Manthai picks it up all over the sideline, quickly inbounds, but gives it to Egan. Manthai volleys it a little bit wildly and comes out of bounds. North Carolina will inbound. Less than 15 minutes to go in the national championship game. North Carolina was up 1-0 at halftime on the goal by Angela Kelly, who you see there. Two more in the second half, both on counterattacks, as Notre Dame was carrying much of the play. There's Tisha Venturini well, closing out an unbelievable career. Exactly. You talk about numbers. This young woman has lost one game, one game in eight years of high school and college soccer. That's got to be the most remarkable statistic that there is uh, for individual players. One loss in eight years of high school and college There's play. a trend there, Seamus. That's right. I'll try to pick up on it if I can think about it a little bit more. Don Crow blasts it off Station Masters, goes over the end line, and that'll be a goal kick. Take a look at what Venturini has done. Maybe we should say, what hasn't she done? <laughs> 19 goals on the year, ACC Player of the Year, a likely National Player of the Year, had a hat trick in the ACC Tournament Championship game. That was unprecedented. She's a three-time first team All-American, a member of the national team, and won of the long line of great players at the University of North Carolina. And she has it there, dealing it off to Kerry Sanchez, a fellow senior. This senior class has an incredible record. We'll get to that in a moment. Robin Confer, a freshman, over to Kelly. Bangs with Guerrero. Egan up ahead for Dacey, plays it off the body. Tiffany Thompson comes in. Egan now follows it ahead for Dacey. It skips past Sharp. She's going to have to turn it back. Sharf boots it out of bounds and takes off some of the pressure. Well, if there's any hope for, uh, for other coaches, it is the thought that just maybe with six seniors <laughs> graduating from the starting lineup that there is a glimmer next year. And I think there probably is. I mean, never really thought when they lost Mia Hamm last year that Carolina was going to be vulnerable, but uh, obviously not so. This senior class has a record that likely will stand forever. It is 96 one and one with three championships and a fourth only 12 minutes and 10 seconds away. Angela Kelly, part of that senior class. She broke her leg in her first college practice, missed her whole first year and has played every game since in the last four. Venturini loses to Hartwig who clears. Wilson for Confer to Sanchez. Hartwig playing tough. Jody Hartwig has really played very hard throughout the game, as have all the Notre Dame players. There really hasn't been any lessening of effort. Here's Cindy Dawes with a break. She's got Guerrero middle and Manthai far across. Goals for the early cross. And again, Newton is well out 14 yards from the goal line to control that penalty area. Well-timed uh, run by Noonan to come out and get it. And uh, you know, I think it's, it definitely is consolation goal time uh, if, if, it, if it happens for Notre Dame because uh, I'm afraid this game is well and truly lost and Carolina does not know really how to defend a lead alone. They just keep attacking. Kerry Sanchez has other ideas. She turns and fires wide. 
That's always been the hallmark. They do not uh, pack it in or uh, bunker it down as, uh, as they say. They really continue to play the only way they know to play. And I think this is true also for Notre Dame. And there's the future, folks, right there. Robin Confer, the freshman. They don't go away. You know, it's been said before that they, they don't rebuild, they reload. Uh, and although there's an awful lot of reloading to do with six starting seniors and ten in this remarkable senior class, uh, there is an abundance of talent in North Carolina. Venturini sending Egan ahead. Egan ships middle. It comes behind the thrust, and back to pick it up is Dawes. Challenged by Sanchez, Venturini loses control. Dawes takes it back. McCarthy. Man five. Through ball for McCarthy. She didn't anticipate it had come all the way through, and Don Crow just cracks it. Less than 10 minutes to go. North Carolina leads Notre Dame 3 0. Well, the familiar smiles on the North Carolina bench. We've seen that uh, year after year after year in this championship match. And uh, this year there was some thought uh, that there was more than a chance that there would be some tears and not uh, uh, smiles, but uh, not so. Here comes Michelle McCarthy with a burst. Venturini runs her down from behind. McCarthy gets off a deflected shot and Noonan is on it. All right, and seven Carolina players got back in defense. Seven got back with nine minutes to go and a 3 nothing lead. Notre Dame will be there again, though. The Fighting Irish have shown in the last three years in their games against top 20 teams, they consistently get better. In 92, they were 1-5-1 and one against top 20 teams. Last year, they were 4-3-0 and oh against top 20 teams. And if they lose today, their record will be 7-1-1 one and one against top 20 teams. That's consistent improvement. A lot of talent coming together in a hurry in South Bend. This will be a throw in for North Carolina. And again, Angela Kelly will take it. There's Ashley Scharf, who looked a little bit nervous at the start, but she has settled down nicely. And at 5 feet 10 inches tall, and she's going to be a force for Notre Dame for the next season as she goes into her senior year next year. McCarthy for Masters. Wilson on her back. Sharp just pops it up. Santana wins the free ball. Dacey with Egan on the run. And there's another one of those Danielle Egan runs, which are her trademark. She loses the man thigh, gets it back. Chipped to the corner for Keller. Keller against Thompson. Keller turns into the middle, headed by Dawes, it comes to Sanchez. Sanchez has Venturini lurking near the penalty spot. He likes to come back out to Kelly. Kelly across the middle, Venturini has a scores! Tisha Venturini puts the capper on a brilliant career. About seven and a half minutes to go and it is 4-0 Carolina. Oh, and another wonderful goal, another great individual flick by Venturini, but uh, you know, we've just come to expect this now from this really extraordinary player, without doubt the best player on the field, no question. Kelly with a good cross, and look at this little flick. Just a delicate little flick inside the post. Beautifully guided by Tisha Venturini. Lovely stuff, a good quality ball served in, and then the flick, maybe a slight uh, deflection off the keeper's hands. We saw it late. Um, and as you mentioned, the last straw, a 4 0 lead. You know, North Carolina have got to be a TV producer's delight. There's never a chance of overt overtime, no overtime, <laughs> no missed planes or any of that stuff. Uh, Carolina uh, put on a show and uh, they, they never stop attacking. It has been discussed, Seamus, that Carolina's utter dominance under Anson Dorrance may not have been good for women's soccer, but I disagree because what Carolina is doing is forcing someone to come up to their level. And whoever ends up knocking off Carolina someday is gonna be one heck of a soccer team. 
because Carolina has established a consistent level of excellence that you rarely see in the world of sport. It goes from generation of player to generation of player. And even though the Jody Hartwigs in the world and, and the Notre Dame players can play a very hard, good game and even carry the play for 20 or 25 minutes, you just cannot top that consistent level of talent and the assault that Carolina puts on you. I think that even though they've dominated, it still has been great for the sport. That's right. And it's uh, it's also great to see in athletic contests such a high level of self-belief. I mean, these players really believe in themselves. Uh, they know that uh, they, they're not out there with other, other uh, motivations that... Uh, of revenge or any of that sort of stuff. They're out there because there's such a high standard of excellence expected and they just believe they can produce. And I think you're right. I think it has been a great model for other teams to come up to and they've come very, very close to it and they will eventually. Tiffany Thompson tries to load the gun, deals it off. That's Guerrero in traffic to Masters to McCarthy. McCarthy a good one-on-one -on -one dribbler, but Kelly gets in front of her and Wilson takes it away. Wilson bothered as she tries to turn the corner. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. One-on-one -on -one dribbler is right, but one-on-three, uh, one-on-four is tough. Uh, no insult to Michelle, but just again, a tribute to the Carolina team concept. Uh, team defense, get back, close down the alleys. Four-nothing is what we want, not four-one. Here's Hartwig, Sanchez giving chase. And Sanchez wins the battle along the sideline, square to Venturini. Five minutes to go in the national championship game. Carolina with three second half goals. A couple on counters has blown it open. Tiffany Thompson creates the opening. Nice ball to Cindy Dawes. Dawes draws it back against Keller. A little chip to the spot. Wilson with the header to take it down. Manthai loses control over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for Carolina. Four and a half minutes to go, and it is just a matter of designing the celebration. Here comes Susie Green, a senior for North Carolina, has not played a lot in her career, but is a valued teammate of all these seniors, and they will tell you that. Robin Confer comes off, and the freshman has three more cracks at titles. And the way Carolina plays, who's to say that Confer won't be back in three more national championship games. Wilson for Keller. Keller working on Scharf, but ship ahead. Dacey and Fisher in a race, and here comes Renola way out of her box. Dacey got a piece of it. Renola recovers and gets back. Dacey intended for Egan. Manthai lays it off for Dawes. Dawes off Kelly. Masters for Notre Dame. Drops it for McCarthy. McCarthy turns Kelly. Nice move. McCarthy now into space. She's got Guerrero on the right side. A little chip for Guerrero in the penalty arc. It comes all the way through to Sanchez, who is going to let Noonan call her off. Well, Tracy Noonan is expected to see a lot more action next year than Carolina keepers have seen in the regular season in years past. Today, she has shown that she is level to the task, at least. Here's Debbie Keller on a run. Scharf out of bounds. Carolina ball. Less than three minutes to go. 4-0, Tar Heels lead. What a convincing display. I mean, no question, uh, the, the scoreline tells it all. Uh, it's, it's not that Notre Dame is four goals inferior. It's just that uh, when Carolina really turns it on, they take advantage of every opportunity uh, virtually that's given to them. Kelly chips into the box. Sobrero. And even if taking advantage, Jack, of those chances results in failure, uh, doesn't succeed, for instance, uh, it never seems to bother them. They, they have that that particular characteristic figured out that you need to keep trying and trying and trying again. And if you don't su succeed, then that's not uh, anything to get your head down about. There are going to be other chances. Just keep working for them. Uh, and it, it's simple. It's straightforward. It's not a particularly sophisticated philosophy, but it works. Sanchez runs over the top of the ball as we enter the final two minutes of the game, the national championship here. We had a feeling something was up when we woke up this morning after not having seen the sun for four days and the sky was Carolina blue. 
in midfield. That's Tiffany Thompson. Wilson turns it back for Carolina. Keller for Dacey, but Scharf is there. Dacey, nice move over to Keller. She has Venturini. Venturini against Dawes for Dacey. Dacey on the go, she's in alone. Dacey, save, rebound, scores! Sarah Dacey finishes it off on a solo effort in the box, collecting her own rebound. 5-0 North Carolina with a minute 20 to go. Well, it doesn't matter what the margin is. It does not matter what the context is. North Carolina continues to press the offense. They try to play the most exciting brand of ball they can every minute of a 90-minute match. That's what has raised the game. And here it is, Sarah Dacey, the sophomore from Framingham, Massachusetts. A nice save by Renola, but Dacey was there and banged it home. Sobrero, an excellent effort getting back, but she couldn't keep it out of the net. 5-0, North Carolina. Here's Kate Fisher. The Irish not giving up at all. Tremendous effort for them. But there is still a sizable gap between North Carolina and everybody else. Here's Dacey in the final 45 seconds. Guys, we're going out. Watch this camp. Okay. Okay. Renola, McCarthy, Green, Venturini a through ball for Sanchez who's closing out her career. She also is a senior. It'll be a corner kick with 20 seconds to go and Carolina's going to try to get one off. They play to the very final second. Kerry Sanchez on the corner kick into the middle. Thompson clears it up and 10 seconds to go. That's pretty much going to do it here. Venturini can't get a hold of it. Dawes clears. Santana chips into the box. And North Carolina's dynasty continues. Nine in a row. 12 out of 13. The Tar Heels remain one of the greatest dynasties in the history of college sports.